What's up y'all and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in my last video, I showed you guys how to create your very own booty workout step by step. So if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and pause this video. Check it out right here before we get started. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to put that into action and plan out your very own workout split. So if you're someone that struggles with planning out the days and how often to train your booty specifically, then go ahead and keep on watching. So I broke everything up into three simple steps so you have a clear understanding of where to begin. Step number one, you want to figure out how many days a week you want to train your ass. From my experience, I've seen the most muscle growth when I trained them three times a week, okay? Three times a week for just booty is a lot. That's how I saw my ass literally grow within like a month. I'll put a, I'll put a picture right here of like a month transformation of when I switched from two times a week to three times a week. I switched from two times a week to three times a week because I wasn't seeing the results and the progress that I wanted to see and I knew that I could push myself harder. But do not overtrain because it can cause injuries. It can push you back many, many, many steps from all the gains that you just made if you injure yourself. So always know your limits before you do anything crazy. But I feel like training them three times a week gives you enough freedom to split them up even further. You want to occasionally work out the adjacent muscles to the glutes just so that your glutes don't take over and your quads end up getting weak or your hamstrings get weak because if it's imbalance in the muscles, girl, we don't have to have a talk. Like I just said, you don't want to do just booty, 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 booty. Even though it's booty three times a week, you still want to split it up even further. So what I like to do is glutes and quads one day, glutes and hamstrings one day, and then glutes and calves one day. I personally do not train calves. So if you are someone that doesn't want to work out your calves either, you can do this day as glutes and glutes. So this is just like full on booty blasting day. You also want to make sure that when you're spreading these days out, you have one to two days of rest in between. Don't worry about having a set specific day like, oh, Monday, I have to do this, and oh, Tuesday, I have to do this. Like That isn't as important as as long as you get booty three times a week within that week period, you're fine. Drew a little calendar for you guys to kind of go along and help you and kind of explain a little bit further about what I mean. Is there like a ray of light shining through or is that just... So, let's say we're going to do Monday. Maybe rest this day, come back Wednesday, rest. Okay, so maybe this is how you want to plan it out. I would recommend one to two days of rest in between. But if you are a beginner and you're just starting out and your body's not really used to working out and lifting heavy, start off booty twice a week rather than three times a week. And once your body gets used to that within like a month or two, then you can add the third one. This is for like if you're advanced, if your body's already used to it and you're just trying to override maybe a plateau you're in or you're just trying to grow the glutes even more. If you're a beginner, I would do maybe booty here, rest, rest, booty. You can do rest, rest, booty, rest, rest, booty, rest, rest, booty. So this week would only be twice a week. That's okay if you're a beginner because you're gonna need to give your body more rest because you're going to feel way more sore. If you're more advanced, intermediate, you can do booty, rest, 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 booty, rest. This is why in my booty blaster program, I have the days spread out as like day one, day two, day three, etc. Because I want you to be able to choose your own days so you can have more flexibility. I don't know how your guys' schedules are. I don't want to be like, oh, Monday you have to do this. Wednesday you got to do this. Friday you got to do this. Because like, shit, that doesn't always work out for everyone. If you're someone that wants to incorporate upper body, you can do like booty, upper body, booty, upper body, booty, rest, rest. You know, you feel me? You kind of get the, get the gist. You get what I'm trying to say? So step two, 
make sure you have rest days okay i know i kind of have it here but i just wanted to make sure you guys know this proper recovery is just as important as you working out in the gym those 22 to 23 hours that you're not working out your body is repairing and recovering and building the muscles your muscles need about 24 to 48 hours to recover so if 48 hours have passed by and you're still sore and it's time to train guess what you're gonna train because look if you're a beginner i get it 48 hours goes by and you're probably still gonna be super 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 sore so if you are a beginner and you're still super sore then go to the gym go stretch don't even go to the gym just stretch maybe foam roll like you can do that anywhere but if you are more advanced and you're kind of used to the soreness and the soreness isn't too bad but you still feel sore push through you can do it when you start training your muscles start to warm up and the soreness goes away if you feel like you're just always sore try make sure you're doing proper warm-ups before and then stretch after your workout i guarantee that'll help with the soreness so much another way to help decrease the soreness is to take protein and branch chain amino acids if you'd like to see a video all about supplements what supplements are good for you go ahead and like this video or comment down below if you're interested step Three, plan out your exercises so you're not repeating them over and over and over. And what I mean by this, not repeat the same exercises back to back always good to switch up the exercises so you can confuse your muscles it's a lot more simple than it seems because when you split up the glutes into like glutes and quads glutes and hamstring glutes and calves or glutes and glutes makes it a lot easier to categorize what exercises to do that day for example let's put it on here real quick day one maybe you're doing booty and quads okay day two maybe booty and hamstrings Day three, maybe booty and calves, or you can just do booty and booty. Like I mentioned in my video on how to create your own booty workout, you wanna do one to two compound movements, right? So we got squats and we got the hip thrusts for our compound movements. And then you wanna pick two to four accessories. So we want it to be mostly like glute and quad focused. Here, let me, let me kind of draw it out. Booty and quads Monday, right? So let's say we'll do two compound movements, remember, okay? So we can do squats, and then we can do hip thrust, and then you can do the accessories now. So maybe Bulgarian split lunge, leg extension, maybe like a sumo goblet squat, and the cable glute kickback. So now we got our day one set out. And here you would want to rest, Maybe if you're a beginner, rest, rest, and then do the booty. So then your day two, it'll be booty and hamstrings, right? So we can do something like first two compound movements, remember? I do hip thrust every single booty day. Like I do hip, hip thrust three times a week just because like that shit. That's what made my ass grow fat as fuck. Like when I started doing it three times a week, like heavy, that's when I saw the most growth in my glutes. It was crazy. Like it was crazy hip thrust one compound movement and then we'll do like a sumo deadlift two to four accessories if you don't know what i'm talking about just go check out that video you'll understand kind of how i'm planning out each specific day there are reasons why i'm doing certain exercises it doesn't have to be a sumo deadlift either it can be any deadlift because most deadlifts do focus on hamstrings but well i mean convention doesn't but sumo and stiff leg would be really good for hamstring day and then maybe you can do like a dumbbell romanian deadlift those stiff leg deadlifts kettlebell swing kettlebell swings are really good then maybe the hamstring curl and glute a glute bridge and then the last booty day it would be booty and calves hip thrust again always hip thrust and maybe like calf raise machine because you want two exercises that you can progressively overload on you can overload pretty damn fucking high on the calf raise machine right so we got the two compound well the calf raisin isn't really a compound movement but you can overload on it which is why i put it there and then two to four accessories so maybe single leg hip thrust and i'll put this all in the description because i know you can't really read this handwriting like it's kind of i'd be like the hip extension hip abduction machine single leg calf raise that'd be good so you kind of have that, right? I actually wrote out the entire workout for each one. Notice how I don't really repeat any of the exercises except for the hip thrust. Like that's the only thing I'll repeat throughout the week. 
but everything else is different but when I'm done with this and I come to next week I would do the exact same thing so throughout the week switch it up but once you finish that week and you go back into your routine keep the same exercises that makes sense. You don't have to do this three times a week because this is a lot of stress on your, on your legs. Like if you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I would recommend two and then over time increase it to three because three times a week is a lot. It's really a lot on your legs. That's how I kind of injured myself. I messed up my knees for a little bit because I was just constantly doing so much leg. My knees were hurting because my quad muscles were getting super weak because all I was doing was ass, which is why I say you still want to occasionally, occasionally work out the adjacent muscles to the glutes because since my quads were getting weak, the tendons on my knees were getting loose because the quads were kind of like not tight enough to pull up the tendons, which caused a bunch of problems in my knees. Like if you do have knee problems, it's probably from your ankles, from your hips. It's usually not actually directly your knee that's causing the problem. If you are someone who wants to grow your booty and you do not have access to a gym, you can apply these same exact steps. Just categorize your workouts to stuff you can do at home. And if that's something you're interested, go Go ahead and check out this video right here on all the different type of exercises you could do right at your home with literally any objects that you have there like I used a fucking five gallon water jug I started out at home and I was just doing like lunges squats and when I got the motion and the movements I invested in some resistance band but once you become more comfortable then you can upgrade to maybe even a gym membership what I'm trying to say is there's no excuses if you want it you'll take action and you'll do it but if this video helped you out, go ahead and give it a comment down below. If you're looking for a similar plan to what I kind of just told you that builds a foundation and helps you crush every single exercise one after the other, then go ahead and head to gainsbygrace.com and get my booty blaster program. But if you are someone who wants to apply this and really grow their booty, go ahead and click that notification bell button because in my next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how protein shakes seriously took my gains to the next level. But in the meantime, go ahead and check out this video right here. Thank you for watching. I wish you and your booty the best and I will see you in my next video.